Hi, everybody, and welcome uh, to our first uh, FlexiOne Academy session. Uh, my name is Amir Zamora. I want to give people just another minute uh, to join. I see a lot of people joining right now, and uh, we'll start in just a few seconds. Okay, so let's get going. Uh, again, my name is Amir Zmora. I'm the CEO of FlexiWAN, and uh, with me today is uh, Ivor Cresso, who is uh, part of our technical team, technology team. And he will actually be, be giving the major part of uh, this uh, webinar or training. And this uh, session is first of a long series of sessions that we're going to have that will uh, touch various features configuration tips and tricks and many things about FlexiWAN, everything on the technology side. This first session is going to be a short introduction by myself about FlexiWAN. And from there, we'll move over to Ivor, who will talk uh, about mainly about FlexiManage and some other important things as an introduction, as I said, as a first session. Some housekeeping things, the session is recorded and the recording will be later on available on our website and on YouTube. And uh, you're of course welcome to ask questions. That's the purpose of these sessions. So you can see the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. <clears throat> Feel free to ask questions as we go along uh, in this uh, presentation. And we will mainly take questions at the end unless there is something that we feel that is really important to touch right away. So let's get going. And I'm going to start with a question. And the question is, would you buy today a smartphone where the vendor like Samsung and all of those decides for you which applications you can put on your phone? Meaning they will decide if you can have navigation and if you can have navigation, which navigation application you can have. And they will decide if you can have messaging and which, which messaging and so forth and so on. So I will not be waiting for answers here. Usually when I ask the question, the answer is always, of course not. And then the next question is, how come is it that in networking, this is still the situation? The large vendors of the networking world and the security for enterprises, they still decide for the service providers and for the enterprises, what are the capabilities of the system? What can be added, if at all? Can other vendors be integrated? Basically, it's a one size fits all and pretty much of a locked in type of solution. <clears throat> now, the good news is that the world is moving away from it. The world is not accepting it anymore. And we have one testimonial to prove this and a few more things afterwards. This testimonial is by C the CEO of Telefonica Germany. Flexiwine is working with Telefonica Global and we have been deployed already in the first country, which is Germany. And here are the reasons for Telefonica to select us. Let's give him just less than a minute. After many years of cooperation with SMEs, we as Telefonica Germany know exactly what their needs are. Thus, we can react to them with custom fit solutions. The launch of O2 Business Smart Network proves once again Telefonica's innovative strength. It underlines the value of working with young, agile companies from all over the world. Flexivan is an Israeli startup from the ecosystem of our corporate accelerator, Vira. Together with them, we have developed an SD-WAN service offering. This can optimally be adapted to our customer needs. Open APIs and architecture, as well as being open source, were key factors in our decision to select Flexivan for our O2 Business Smart Network service. So I'll just repeat. A few important things from the testimonial, open architecture, open APIs, and being open source were key factors. And what they have built is a service offering, meaning they have a system that is targeted at small, medium, at small, medium businesses, as he mentioned. 
at the beginning, and they have built a lot of things around it using the open APIs that we provide in order to integrate it with their systems and to build a self-service type of solution. Now, they're not alone. If we look at uh, the leads and the opportunities that are coming into FlexiWAN, we're getting an enormous amount of leads. And many of those are managed service providers that are looking to provide services to the mid-market, but not all, only. We also have some very large enterprises, retail, and very large service providers. So the world is actually uh, showing trust in what we're doing by opening accounts and starting to use the system. Now, <clears throat> when we look at the existing solutions out there in the market, we see that they're very much focused on the large enterprises. And we'll touch that in just a few seconds in the next slide. What we do see is that these systems are very big, many, many capabilities, very complicated to deploy. And that's something that does not fit the mid-market, what was mentioned just now in the testimonial. The SMBs or the mid-sized retails, they cannot afford to have a huge project in order to deploy an SD-WAN solution. They need something that can be easily onboarded, configured, and maintained. The solutions themselves, what we see in the market, big software stacks, many, many capabilities inside them with a big, big lock on it. This means that it's a one size fits all type of solution. And there are some features and some capabilities that maybe you might want to add to the system or some that you would want to take out. For example, DPI is usually sub-licensed. It takes a lot of hardware resources, memory, CPU. Usually it comes with some um, royalties that are being paid to the vendor. So it adds a lot of cost on hardware and software side, more complexity. Sometimes it's not needed. You cannot take it out. Same goes for other things that you can would want to remove or add. So the reality is that enterprise requirements can be anywhere between centrally managed IPsec tunnels, meaning just connect, encrypted connections between the various locations, sites, and to the cloud services, all the way to the full featured huge box we saw before. Reality is always somewhere in between, never at the same place. And the big challenge is how do you dynamically move along this line of enterprise requirements? <clears throat> and this is where FlexiWAN comes to play. FlexiWAN is a networking and security company. We disrupt and democratize the SD-WAN and SASE market with FlexiWAN's three world firsts, first and only open source in this field, first and only application store, and that's my next slide, and first and only SaaS business model. So people come to our website, open an account for free. There's a free tier. You can use the system. You want more than that, put in the credit card, pay as you go, only based on what you used per month or in the yearly plan, and we'll touch the business model in just a few minutes. <clears throat> Technically, what we do, we take that big software box I showed before, and slice it to horizontal layers where you have the core networking functions as the base layer. And on top of that, we have the application framework, which allows you to dynamically load third-party or FlexiWAN applications that can run in the data flow of the router, meaning it's not a VNF. We also support VNF and we work with partners in this field, INEA, ADVA, and many others. But this is bare metal, OK? This gives you an option to run bare metal. And on top of that, we have REST APIs and central management system. And this is really what allows you to have a multi-vendor and open type of solution that allows you to add innovation today or tomorrow with a lower total cost of ownership. I can tell you, if you look at our website on the documentation, and Ivor will show the documentation when he starts his part. In the roadmap, you will see that we are releasing our first application at the end of this quarter, but the router itself is built from day one the architecture for these applications, and that's what's starting to come out now. Uh, if we come back to this previous slide, this is what allows you to solve the challenge and really move dynamically along this line of enterprise requirements. <clears throat> and what we say is if we compare it to the mobile phone and to the smartphone, FlexiWAN is doing to enterprise networking and security what the smartphone has done to the feature phone. And we all know where the feature phone is today. So, in the smartphone, you can have two people with exactly the same phone, but completely different functionality based on the applications they have installed. This was not possible in the feature phone days, and it's not possible today in the traditional networking solutions. With FlexiWAN, it can be possible, and that's why it's comparable to the 
revolution of the smartphone. Business model, basically three options. First, when you come to our website, open a free account. It's a shared environment hosted on AWS and it's our brand. You're there together with many others. It's multi-tenant. You can launch service to your customers with it, but it's still flexible and domain and we control when software upgrades take place. Second option, which is the most popular one, is a dedicated environment. This gives you an isolated environment. It's a pretty big environment uh, with many servers, clusters of databases with re uh, a redundancy between them. And that is white label. You can put your logo, map your domain, and software upgrade is something that is coordinated with us. So you have much, much more control while you don't need to invest DevOps and, and the cost is incredibly competitive. The third option is self-hosting. This is very rare, usually only for very, very large deployments, very, very big service providers. And it's a pretty rare case that somebody wants to go for this instead of just a dedicated environment that is extremely cost-effective. Uh, very strong partnership actually that we have with Intel. You can see on our website, this solution brief uh, that was published by Intel. It's on the Intel website as well. And that's performance measurements of FlexiWAN as they were measured by Telefonica. We only said okay to publish. We didn't measure them. And I think that we are, and we also have the additional partnership with the Intel also in their lab. We're testing on very strong servers of Intel. So we have a lot of cooperation and technical cooperation with it. Uh, last but not least, talking about the architecture. So FlexiWAN as typical SD-WAN solution, solutions comprise, is comprised of edge device, which is that SD-WAN router and the management system. Now, if you look at the router itself, there are some unique things here. Mainly, if you look at this layer over here of the applications, and that's exactly the infrastructure that we have built that is designed for this openness. Of course, we are using various open source elements. You can see that in our documentation. We're using VPP, we're using FRR. Uh, there are a lot of companies using these elements, but they're all building closed solutions. And FlexiWAN is an open source solution. Uh, in the management system, various elements, as I said, clusters of databases, and also the northbound APIs on top. Ivor will be able to touch that a bit more. Last slide from my end, on my end, FlexiWAN is, a, is at the intersection of two revolutions, the SD-WAN networking revolution and the open source revolution. We see today many, many companies that have an open source first strategy. And we're the only company at the intersection of these two revolutions. And from here, I want to switch over to uh, Ivor. I'll just remind you again, questions, feel free to add questions to submit your questions in the Q&A and um, over to you, Ivor. Thank you, Amir. Okay, great. So I'll share my screen and let's get started. Okay. So I'll start this uh, presentation as I always start many uh, demos and calls with our customers from our documentation pages. This is the great place to start uh, because the documentation pages are continuously upgraded. So I definitely suggest to, for everybody to visit docsflexi1.com to learn about how Flexi1 works and uh, in general, every, every single part of Flexi1 is documented there. So to start, um, <clears throat> as Amir already shown in the diagram, uh, we, we flexi so basically FlexiWan has two parts, Flexi Manage and Flexi Edge. Uh, Flexi Manage is the central management platform or the orchestrator in the SD-WAN terms, while the Flexi Edge is actually this, uh, every device that runs FlexiWan uh, software, and it, we consider it a Flexi Edge device. So let's cover briefly just a few things before we actually switch to Flexi Manage, and that's uh, system requirements. So system requirements are pretty straightforward. We require two CPU cores, a 64-bit uh, CPU, of course, four gigs of RAM, and uh, that's about it. But the, the main part is that at least two network interfaces must be supported by DPDK and PCIe-based. So these requirements are that you need to have in uh, keep in mind if you plan Flexi1 deployment. Um, so once you have the hardware, of course, you can also go to our documentation pages and click on getting and installing Flexi1. <clears throat> and here you can download Flexi1 images and install installers, and you actually even a pre-built virtual appliances. And uh, for 
pretty much any kind of uh, deployment out there. So FlexiVan can be deployed either bare metal or as a virtual machine. We also support a number of uh, cloud uh, providers such as Amazon EC2, uh, Oracle, Hetzner, or DigitalOcean. <clears throat> so with that, um, let's let's switch to FlexiManage and uh, yeah, to to show you the fun part. So FlexiManage. Um, is uh, the, the the central management platform, and I'm already logged in here, so I'll move just one step back. Uh, basically, in order to try out FlexiWan, you first need to register uh, your account. So to do that, you, have, you can go to our website, flexiwan.com, and from there, click on pricing. And uh, finally, here you can view the pricing for all, all, all of our models. However, you can open a free account by just clicking here. And it will take you automatically to Flexivan, uh, to manage.flexivan.com, where you can fill in all the information and get started. Uh, we will send you a confirmation email once you, uh, to, uh, once you register in order to activate your account. So let's, after you activate your account, you can go to manage.flexivan.com and log in. <clears throat> so this is it. This is how it looks. This is the central management platform. And uh, just to point out, uh, also, if you install Flexi, Flexi Edge software on your uh, local device, uh, uh, local devices also have uh, a Flexi Edge UI, which is very similar to Flexi Manage. But, so, but, but uh, right now we are covering the Flexi uh, Manage, which is the, the, the main part. So <clears throat> let's just have a rundown through all the uh, items on the, in the sidebar. So the first items that I want to focus on is, of course, the organizations and, and profile. So once you create your account and uh, cover, uh, get all the information there, uh, if you click on the organizations, <clears throat> uh, this the, the uh, section, uh, this is where uh, FlexiWine's multi-tenancy functionality uh, shows. Uh, Flexi, uh, Flexi and FlexiManage is built with multi-tenancy in mind. So basically, you can have as many organizations you want, and uh, 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 and each organization can have separate devices. For example, we are now on the FlexiWan organization, and if I click here on the devices, you can actually see these devices, which I will, of course, cover in more detail a bit later. But if I click to organization here, and for example, I just you know select uh, <clears throat> another org and set, Right now, I don't have any devices there, so no devices are shown. But uh, you get the picture. Basically, you can switch between the organizations in uh, just a few clicks. And of course, change a few other uh, settings per organization, which I'll cover a bit later. But here, if you go to users page, here we have our, our own users. And uh, this is the part that also plays uh, with the multi-tenancy is that you can invite users. And you can invite uh, specific users to allow to allow them full access to account or a specific group or even an organization. So what you can say is, okay, let's, uh, uh, if you're an MSP, for example, you can invite uh, your customer to uh, be just a viewer of the, their own organization while you are you continue to be the manager. So viewers cannot make any changes, just view managers can of course make changes. <clears throat> so, uh, and of course, every time, um, you, 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 you invite, uh, uh, you can also invite other users to, to reach your account. And then from the right side, you can actually see multiple uh, other uh, organizations that you can manage. So uh, moving forward, um, let's just cover briefly all the sections. So we covered organizations and users. Uh, billing section is just for uh, <clears throat> if you're using a shared environment. Uh, access keys is just uh, for uh, API uh, to connect you know, to connect actually to FlexiWan's API. And this is the part that's very interesting. Uh, everything you see here in, in FlexiManage, uh, all the communication between FlexiManage and Edge devices is handled through a secure API. So literally every single element is controlled and sent to device through an API. <clears throat> this is really important because if you want to implement, uh, if you want to deploy Flexi uh, when in your own environment and maybe even integrate it with your own CRM, uh, this is possible thanks to API. In our documentation, we also offer API documentation. Uh, if I can just, yeah, not on the API. Of, of, uh, on, um, where you can also open a Swagger API for to try out all the API commands. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, so that covers the first section, the account section, uh, the user recovered. So let's get to the fun part. So this is the devices page. This is where we actually can, uh, uh, you can see multiple sites. Uh, as I said, FlexiMan supports a number of, uh, uh, of, of 
deployments methods, whether bare metal, virtual machine, VPS. And here in this case, we have uh, two physical, uh, one uh, physical device. Uh, we also have uh, one a VPS and three local devices running as a virtual machine, um, virtual machines in my lab. So <clears throat> even here, you can see the, the all, all, all of them are added to this uh, to this organization, and uh, all of them can work together. So if you go here, for example, to tunnels page, you can see that there are already a number of tunnels between them, and we can actually see uh, in a much nicer way uh, these tunnels and. Uh, <clears throat> You can basically see all the IPs with the uh, mouse uh, hover and uh, so yeah, um, switching back to the devices. Um, so let's go through one of these devices to just to show how it looks and works. Let's go to the Madrid device, which is a physical device from our hardware partner. And um, when you click on the device, you can see the general information, but on the interfaces page, you can, uh, when you click on the interfaces tab, uh, you can see basically that this device has a dual WAN, one wired and one LTE WAN. And uh, so this automatically shows you that we both support multi-tenant, um, oh, sorry, that we support multiple WANs. We also support multiple LANs. And for WANs, we also support LTE. And the LTE listed, the LTE devices can actually be, uh, supported LTE devices can be found also in our documentation. Uh, in any case, if you purchase uh, from any of our hardware partners, they will be able to provide you a device with the supported modem. Um, so from here is the, the standard networking, uh, uh, the, the, the networking um, <clears throat> configuration. Uh, the interesting thing is, so of course this device has multiple ports, so you can configure each port separately as a separate LAN or as also as a bridge. So multiple ports can work as a single port. And then from DHCP, you can create a DHCP uh, server and the DHCP will be able to serve these addresses. Uh, <clears throat> one also uh, important thing to point out um, is that, um, uh, right here we have path labels. This is something that I will cover in a bit in, in a few moments, uh, a, a bit later in the demo. Uh, but um, we can create tunnels uh, between a um, single or uh, both uh, using both WANs. So moving forward, there's a uh, ah, yes. So to point out, uh, by default we have also LAN here, and LAN has OSPF enabled. <clears throat> and I'll show the power of this feature here in, the mo uh, in, a, in a moment, which is when I click on the routing table because this device has already tunnels uh, i can in my routing table i can see actually the uh, <clears throat> excuse me i can also see the the lan network from the other side and this is thanks to ospf because ospf is enabled by default we uh, on lan interface uh, all the networking information all the routes are automatically propagated the moment the tunnels are connected so moving forward, um, you know, at the moment there are no policies, but this device can also have a firewall policy or path selection policy, which I'll cover in a bit. In a, uh, in a bit. Uh, also firewall, the, each device can have its own uh, device specific firewall rules. Right here we allow uh, 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 SSH and local edge UI access. What's also important to, to point out, each device can also have the regular uh, port forwarding or NAT one-to-one -one, uh, firewall rules. <clears throat> and uh, then, of course, the, the rest is just a pretty straightforward uh, traditional networking features, such as you know, ability to add static routes, watch the statistics. And uh, the last few tabs are for troubleshooting and logging purposes. Uh, what you can what's interesting is when you click here to fetch, fetch logs, you can directly fetch logs uh, from device uh, directly from Flexi Manage, so you can actually troubleshoot and see uh, what's happening, or, uh, or you can troubleshoot even specific other services from Flexi One. And finally, the command tab allows you to uh, to uh, execute commands directly on device from Flexi Manage. And uh, yes, of course, uh, the, the the interesting uh, part is here. If you click on the configuration page, you can actually see what the, what is being sent, what kind of configuration, and in what format uh, format is being sent uh, to device through an API. So this is basically what the device receives, and then builds uh, uses the configuration from Plexi Manage. And the configuration that I just mentioned. Uh, uh, so we keep you know configuration on Flexi Manage, and as long as the device is synced. Local configuration on the device is synced with like uh, with Flexi Manage. That uh, that means that it's you know synced in it has in, in green, green state and sync. <clears throat> so, as I said, right now we have multiple devices, and if we click on the tunnels page, we can see that there are many tunnels between them. 
Uh, this tunnels page uh, can show you um, the list of all the devices in question that are being used for tunnels. And you can see that we have regular tunnels and also tunnels with path labels. So path labels are basically uh, uh, just a, as a, as a post-it sticker. Stick of it, think of it as a post-it sticker, which you label a specific interface and you know you put it or you stick it onto the Ethernet cable. And that's exactly what this is. It's just a logical way to label the interface. But path labels are, are even though they seem very sim simple, are actually very uh, useful when used with tunnels, because with tunnels, then you can use a much more granular a way of creating tunnels, and I'll show this in, in a moment. moment. And uh, but uh, we can also use path labels for um, uh, path selection, which is our our application based routing uh, functionality, which I'll cover later in this demo. So going forward, the 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 the, the, the all the tunnels can be viewed here from the tunnels page, and you can also even uh, filter specific uh, per specific device or per specific status, for example, show all connected tunnels. This is incredibly useful if you have hundreds of tunnels. Um, so what I was uh, now explaining is, yeah, so right here, you can go also navigate to dashboards and network to get a better, you know, nicer diagram uh, of all the tunnels that we just uh, showcased here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, what 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 I also want to point out that right by default, FlexiWAN tunnels uh, use a pre shared key IPsec with pre shared keys, but we also support uh, IQv2 and uh, no encryption as well. And this can be also set per organization. And if you go here to organizations, and you can change actually the tunnels key exchange method here. Um, yeah, I think that's it from the tunnels. So let's go back to the devices page. Um, <clears throat> so. Yeah, as well as uh, on tunnels pages, you can also filter devices here. Pretty much every page has filtering options. Uh, you can, we also have multiple kinds of views, a table view, which shows you much more information for about each uh, deployment. This is much handy when useful when you have you know, hundreds of devices, hundreds of sites. Um, so moving forward, we covered the tunnels, but what, uh, in addition to tunnels, uh, the newest feature we added are, is actually peers. Uh, peering functionality is a feature which allows you to connect FlexiVan to a cloud-based service or a third-party router using IPsec IQv2. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate this now, but uh, this feature functionality basically connects, allows you to connect FlexiVan to an existing a third party device or a cloud provider. This is incredibly useful if you want to, for example, deploy FlexiWAN within a, an existing uh, network and, um, or, or um, to, if you want to connect to uh, some like Amazon uh, VPS and, and so on. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I brought up um, pet labels before. So let's get in this section. So basically pet labels, this is how it looks. You can create pet labels. And while creating path labels, it allows you to create either a regular path label or a direct, uh, and by the way, so reg regular uh, path label, which is used uh, only for tunnels, or DIA path label, which is used for internet breakout. So these path labels, as I said, are logical ways to label each interface. And then later with other FlexiWAN features such as tunnels, you can create tunnels uh, between specific path labels, or if you use DIA, uh, pad labels, which are used for internet breakout. You can use pad selection, to, uh, which is our application-based routing, to uh, route specific outgoing traffic uh, using specific uh, uh, DIA label. But I'll cover that in, a, in, in uh, 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 later in, the, in this uh, demonstration. <clears throat> so yes, and by the way, uh, hope feel free to ask uh, questions. Uh, we'll cover them if something is not clear or if something, uh, if you have some questions about functionality, uh, please send us uh, the, this Q&A but, uh, button, click on it and uh, send questions and we'll answer them shortly. <clears throat> um, so moving forward, uh, right now we have multiple devices with several tunnels between them. And I brought up path labels. Uh, we have tunnels with path labels and these path labels are assigned. For example, let's go to to, I think a yeah, Tel Aviv device, and this device right now does not have any pet labels. So <clears throat> the reason why I talk a lot about these pet labels is because I want to uh, show how easy it is to assign. So for example, ISP1 and ISP2. And these pet labels can now be used for tunnels uh, or for application-based routing, which is the next topic that I want to cover. So 
the the application based uh, routing uh, uh, which is in our case called uh, pet selection uh, comes in, in two in two sections basically in two areas one is the traffic and app identifications which is our built-in database of uh, application identifications uh, which are basically just uh, commonly used uh, uh, popular services uh, ports uh, or or uh, IP ranges for example Amazon if we click here AWS you can see all the popular there's a bunch of actually pages all the popular IP uh, <clears throat> sorry all the IP ranges from the popular Amazon web services uh, service uh, you also cover so applications, uh, popular applications, and um, this uh, this whole list is built in. It's available to everybody, and we continuously update it uh, with with more uh, services, uh, ranges, and uh, application ports. So just yeah, to point out, for example, um, BitTorrent. You know, BitTorrent. If you, you can you can see the specific ports and protocols that's being used. So why I'm showing this? This is the <clears throat> Uh, the application notifications database and if you are missing one of the uh, if you're missing something you can just also create your own custom application notification it can be just ips just ports or both together and now that we you know showcase this section the the part that i would like you to pay attention is the categories uh, all of these applica application notifications come in uh, three categories one is the actual category by itself which has vpn virtualization or actually, let me just expand this a little bit. Uh, you can see collaboration and so on, or you can use a service class or an importance. So these three categories, just you know, remember this because now I'm going to show you why it's important. Uh, if you go to traffic optimization and path selection, this is the application-based uh, routing functionality, uh, which allows you to route uh, outgoing, uh, outgoing um, traffic across specific uh, 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 path labels uh, and also allows you to not just route but we also support three actually functionalities which I'll cover now uh, one is to do a regular so for example um, multiple let's use this example path selection policy so you can add multiple rules and uh, you can say in this case that we can create a rule which will fail over all traffic across primary and secondary um, uh, label which is di label and uh, then you can use multiple add multiple uh, higher priority rules which will then do fine tuning of the of the of the traffic uh, of a specific outgoing traffic but what i wanted to show here is when i want to create a new one um let's say just example uh but we have selection order so selection order shows three bad selection um uh, routing options let's put it like that the priority is the failover the load balancing is uh, load balancing <laughs> as it says uh, which basically allows you to uh, share traffic across multiple or, or outgoing traffic uh, uh, using load balancing across multiple WANs or multiple tunnels and finally is the link quality which is the uh, oops, uh, which is the application based uh, sorry, which is the quality-based routing functionality we, which we have added last month, which is a feature which we recommend when using um, very sensitive applications, time-sensitive applications like Zoom calls or like uh, voice calls. And this will this will make sure this will gather additional statistics to make sure to follow the the link deterioration. So if ISP one in this case is starting to link that starts to deteriorate, it will switch automatically to traffic call to ISP two and so without any kind of interruptions and the categories that i mentioned in the traffic and app identifications uh, are, are, are actually can be used here so if you go here under application name you can use specific application you can say zoom and in this case zoom will be load balanced across these two uh, actually link quality actually uses load balancing but uh, uh, it, would, it, it would it would it would make sure that it does not interrupt <clears throat> the uh, the Zoom call, if you pick this kind of category, Zoom or any kind of other of the application names, what you can also do is click so click here and uh, then pick the categories that we also showcased. So for example, internet categories. Uh, but what we also in most cases recommend is just to create rules with high, low and medium. So for example, you can say, you know, high traffic, all the traffic that's marked with high importance will be uh, 
load balance across these two links, all the traffic above the load portents can just be, you know, use go to the secondary ISP, less important ISP, because this is less important traffic. And just to point out, so again, if you go here to traffic and, uh, and applet notifications, you can actually see, you can sort by importance and you can actually see which traffic is marked uh, important or not. And uh, you can also remember, you can create your own uh, application notifications, which you can then use uh for for pad selection uh, one of the things that i uh, didn't mention is that this custom app identifications are actually used for two features uh, actually so flexivan many features rely on other functionalities of flexivan so in this case custom and an app and uh, sorry in this case uh, app identifications are uh used for both pad selection and also for, for firewall rules which i'll cover in a moment so <clears throat> just to finish off uh basically here we have um pad selection policies you can once you create a specific policy with either multiple rules or specific rules, uh, you simply install the policy by navigating to the devices page uh, by selecting one or all devices. And from the action menu, you can uh, actually install the policy. You pick whether it's pad selection or firewall and you install. So th this uh, helps, incredible. this is basically showing the, 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 the true power of FlexiWAN because you can create these pad selection policies and then deploy at scale, whether it's the same in same three click supply, whether it's you're deploying on a single device or thousands of devices. So moving forward, um, let's go to firewall. So the firewall uh, functionality uh, is uh, the feature that uh, works in a similar way as pad selection, where pad selection applies to outgoing traffic and routes traffic use to, to specific uh, path labels. With firewall rules, you can create uh, policies for uh, company-wide uh, policies that you can then apply on thousands of, thousands of devices at the same time. And you can see that the layout is pretty much familiar as well as uh, uh, familiar to device-specific uh, firewall rules. So just to point out what, you, what we support is you can create a default uh, template policy like this one, which you know blocks Facebook, Netflix, and BitTorrent, allows traffic for specific ranges to, to access the router uh, using SSH, and you can install it to devices. And also we support filtering. So if I click back to firewall, and if I click here, show all these devices that are running, right now we have Tel Aviv and Tokyo this, that have this um, policy. And what you can do is, you can go again to specific device and click on firewall tab. You will see this. Uh, you will see that the policy is now in, uh, installed, and that these rules are called global rules. But it does. Not, but it, uh, you can also do uh, device specific rules by enabling device specific rules, and then allowing adding more firewall rules because not every site is the same. They don't have same IP, or you know you cannot cover everything with one with, with one policy. Uh, so you can do also combination of device specific firewall rules and um, with the policy installed. Uh, we, we, I'm not going to go uh, into many details uh, on the firewall because we actually have a video for, uh, on our YouTube channel devoted only for uh, to to covering the firewall. So please check out our YouTube um, channel. Um, so moving forward, yeah, but one of the things that I didn't mention in regards to tunnels, so let's make a small step back, uh, is the creation of tunnels. Fleximan, uh, with Fleximan, you can create very easy, uh, easy and fast in just a few clicks tunnels between multiple devices. Basically, you can create click, the same way as with policies, uh, you select devices that you want to use for tunnels. Under actions, you click create tunnels, and this will show you a small wizard where you can create, uh, you can decide which kind of topology you wish to use. And if it's whether it's a hub and spoke, then you decide which device is going to be a hub. Of course, I selected two devices. So in this case, it doesn't matter. But if you have selected all devices, then you can choose one device to be the, the hub and all of them will other will connect to it as spokes. Uh, the pad labels are also <clears throat> used for, uh, for tunnels if you want to have more um, granular tunnels. So yeah. I didn't cover this in the beginning, but uh, uh, so yeah, moving forward. Um, what, what's left now, we covered security. Uh, now let's go to dashboards, which I already shown with FlexiWAN. We provide a neat little dashboard as a diagram, which is a zoomable, and it shows you all the link uh, status and latency on mouse uh, hover. 
So uh, and if the link in, in, if the link is not connected, then you then it will be dotted lines. And it also shows you that this actually in this color is a actual path label the tunnel instead of the regular tunnels. Uh, also, the tunnel can be. Oh, yeah, but sorry. Also, what uh, under another dashboard dashboard that's uh, that's shown is network traffic. So here you can view all the traffic between all devices, or you can use a specific uh, device to view its uh, all traffic or using uh, traffic or all using all interfaces, or just specific tunnels, or even just to pick a specific direction. So it's pretty granular. You can you can get any kind of statistics that you may need. Um, and finally, the troubleshooting section uh, is the place where we can access jobs. So all the changes that I made, every time I added the path label, stopped device, changed, any made any kind of change, it actually created the job. And this job is uh, then being sent to device through an API. That's remember the configuration. And you can actually click here and I can see who created the job and uh, what was the contents of the job. Uh, and it, which is very useful for you know viewing the IPs and the ports that are being used for tunnels and in general for troubleshooting or just to making sure that the the jobs have completely com uh, successfully uh, completed. You can also filter jobs for failed, waiting, try, uh, running, and so on uh, statuses. And um, yeah, finally the notifications page. This is the page which shows you the uh, alerts of every device once there is uh, some kind of change either the interface. Uh, and th this actually, many of the notifications here use the uh, AI-based network healing. So in this case, um, some uh, the system can detect uh, when the device uh, is online, but cannot establish tunnel, or if the port is changing too much uh, so for, for, for the tunnels, and uh, it will be able to, it will notify you here in this section. So with that, I, I tried to be as fast as I could to cover. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, we're actually getting to the very close to the top of the hour. So I think, uh, yeah, Ivor, you can stop your screen share. And I think it's a good time to thank everybody that came. It's great to see the questions. And uh, we're happy to receive more through our support. What we will do is we will send you a link to the recording of the session. And we will also be sharing in our general email blast a more detailed agenda of additional planned sessions. We're going to have a lot of these sessions and all of them will be on our website. You will see a new section that will come out on our website, which will be the Flex One Academy. And the goal is to provide more and more guide and technical guide videos. So you have hands-on demonstration of how to configure things. Uh, Ivor, thank you very much for this great uh, presentation. And thank, thank you, you everybody for joining. And I think that by this we can uh, conclude for today. Thank you very much, everybody.